starts at an even lower rung than the working class because no one believes a word he says or works for a living. Most workers in America know what he is, a stupid college teacher with a very small, a, a very low IQ, a very mean one with a very low IQ. And uh, so he can't work with the working class. He works with the welfare class. That's, that's Obamaism, which is a, a more virulent form of Marxism. Obamaism is actually more virulent than Marxism, meaner. And then, of course, the last stage of communism is that they take, they take over all of society. They, they not only take over the ownership class, they kill them. And then society becomes perfect, and it evolves into a classless society without government, where, in other words, the thugs in the street of Ferguson rule America. You like that? How's that for a dire picture of where this all goes? It's all in my forthcoming book, by the way. I'm glad you... I didn't mean to talk about it. It's, it's going to be found in Government Zero, which you can only order online, the first printing, first edition. But I'm not, it's too far ahead to talk about it, but the topic came up, and it's so important for me that I decided to write it out for you to understand in Government Zero. But I explained it to you for free just now. If you wish to comment on any of this... I pity you because it's Labor Day weekend and most normal people are brainless right now. Their minds are on blue skies, white clouds, and they really don't care about these bigger issues. If you're the small number of people with a high IQ who do see things for what they are, and by the way, my ratings just came in. Despite what anyone may say, this show is booming. I'm going to give you one example. I can't give you the exact numbers. I can give you one number. It's a factual number that no one can detract from. In the heart of Washington, D.C., this show is heard on WMAL. I'm picking one station out of many as an example. On WMAL, I have an, I have an astonishing 3.7 share of the whole radio audience in Washington, D.C., in the age group 25 to 54, which is the toughest age bracket. In 12 plus, which is a broader audience, it's over a four share. These numbers are unheard of during day parts in, the, in radio today. Do you know that? Oh, you'll find them after 6 o'clock. That's easy. That's, that's a given. Numbers are always higher after 6 o'clock when a normal person is not listening to radio anymore. They go home and have dinner. But in the hard, scrabble life of day part radio, this show has an over four share in 12 plus in Washington, D.C. Why? Because people are thirsting for basically basic ideas with facts to support them and a description of what this monster, this low IQ monster is doing to this country and the world. Any other questions? I have the answers. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Did you know that puts the fear of God into the hearts of everyone who fled Russia and the Soviet Union? But it may as well be the theme song of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and the entire Democrat Party. They are leading us step by step, stage by stage, day by day, into the darkness of Marxism, socialism, communism, whichever way you want to put it, it doesn't really matter. Over bureaucracy, uh, big bureaucracy, permits, licenses, telling people what to do, jailing Christians for not giving out wedding licenses to gay women, that is my friend the mark of a of a fascist socialist dictatorship you say how can you combine fascist and socialist very simply because fascism and socialism are one and the same when they become dictatorial you have been taught in school that fascism was the opposite of socialism but it's not the opposite joseph stalin was a socialist who was a fascist he killed people he put them in labor camps if they didn't bend to his will that's fascism isn't it what does fascism mean many of you don't know Fascism comes from the Italian uh, word, the Latin word fascia, or stick. And it symbolized the, um, the batons that Roman legionnaires carried to beat people into submission. That's, that's what it means in plain English, fascism. So Obama uses the stick of the laws and the courts, which he has stocked with fascists, to force people to do things against their will and against their religion. That's fascism. What he did today through his little judge there in Kentucky, jailing a Christian county clerk who refused to issue a marriage license to a, a lesbian couple, is the equivalent of fascism 
in the mind of anyone who understands communism or fascism. But I really wanted to talk about the economics of socialism and how it crippled India and how in the, the Indian economy became a, something the world had never seen before. Once the people were free to pursue their own interests economically, India boomed like they had never seen in history. And whole cities grew up like mushrooms overnight once the government got out of the way. That's what the free market brought to India. Here in America, we once had the greatest free market in the history of the world, which slowly has been curtailed, constrained, and controlled and corralled by one generation after another of very low IQ leadership. The Democrat Socialist Party of America is exactly everything wrong with America and the world. It stands for a retrograde, retrograde view of the economic principles I've just described to you. Everything backwards. Look at California, the most overregulated state in the world. Is its economy booming? No. He's simply taxing people to death and, and using high taxation as an example of his genius. Jerry Brown's a real genius. He really saved California. And what about the corruption of California? Building a railroad to nowhere? How many people have made billions of dollars on land, land sales around the corridor, the rail corridor? I don't know. Watch the show that just went off the air. It finished its season. The detective. They actually showed you the corruption of those killing each other over land surrounding the future uh, rail down the center of the corridor. I couldn't believe that they actually got that produced in Hollywood. That was amazing. And no one said a word. No one put two and two together. It was actually about Jerry Brown's railroad to nowhere. Nobody said a word because the media is controlled by the socialist government. It's called a one-party, one-media system. It's called the dictatorship. Right now, it's a dictatorship of ideas. Tomorrow, it will be much different than that, unless they are voted out of office as soon as possible, which explains the Trump phenomenon. You understand this whole picture I just painted? I hope so. It's for Labor Day, so you understand what labor really is about. It's about freedom. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. So the elephant that became a tiger, and that's India. And once India abandoned decades of socialism and freed the Indian people, their natural ingenuity and desires for bettering themselves yielded whole new cities. Poverty diminished. Wealth like you could never believe. Literacy rate up. Poverty down. Health improved. The exact opposite is happening under this very low IQ president of ours. Don't confuse a man who is so mean that he will go against the people and the Congress to impose an antiquated worldview upon a people that were once free with intelligence. Don't confuse that. He's a very low IQ man because if he doesn't know history, which he obviously doesn't know, I mean the man must, must be stupid, he's locked into the doxies of the 1960s hippies and he can't seem to change. So is Hillary Clinton. She should know better. She hangs out only with billionaires. She must know what a crippling government does to people. But you see, they actually do know because it gives them more power. All they want is power. These are drunk individuals. These are, dr these are power drunk individuals. And all they want is more power. Again, I want to tell you that this, this lesson I'm giving you today sort of is important to me to explain it to you in the simplest ways possible and try to explain to you when you say socialist what it means and how it can, it can metastasize into communism and then fascism and then the next thing you know you're in prison which already happened today when a very very simple woman in Kentucky a county clerk refused to grant a marriage license to lesbians and a judge threw her in jail that's fascism so don't say it can't happen here it is happening here under the under the iron boot of Barack Obama and the gay lobby. That's a one man's opinion. Now, if I were alone in a room and had no audience, you'd say, who is this guy? I'm not alone in a room with no audience. I'll remind you who I am. My name is Michael Savage. I've been on the radio for 21 years. 
I'm on 250 stations, including the biggest in the country, during drive time on the East Coast. All important for you to know, I've written many bestsellers, six in a row now. My last one was called Stop the Coming Civil War. My next one will be Government Zero. And that's it. What I'm saying to you is the show is booming in in, uh, New York. It's up in New York on WABC. It's up 50% on WJR in Detroit. It's up to an over four share and 12 plus on WMAL in Washington. Now, why is that? I'm not here to just blow my own horn, although I do enough of that, all of us do, because no one else will do it for us. And we certainly won't do it for each other. We're all in competition. And the thing is, I'm doing it so you understand that you're not alone. You're actually the majority of people in the country. And I mean the majority of those who actually work and produce taxes. I don't mean the thugs in the streets of America who burnt it down in Baltimore or wanted to burn down Ferguson. I'm not talking about them. Those people are Obama's armies. I'm talking about you, the working people of America, of all races, of all races, of all ethnic backgrounds. The working people of America are in real trouble, and they've been looking for a real voice. They found it in Donald Trump. But speaking of Donald Trump, who was on my show yesterday, who I support, I'm a little worried about the latest announcement that he gave today, where he said he will support the Republican Party if he's not nominated. I don't like that. Something's wrong with that picture. Now, you may say that's a good thing because he probably won't be nominated and a third party would give it to Hillary. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. Third parties have never done well in America. I'm not only for a third party. I'm for third party, fourth party, fifth party, sixth party, seventh party. I'd like to see a full spectrum ranging from ranging from the radical left under Barack Obama, which would be the Socialist Party USA, all the way to the other side of the spectrum. All the way to the other side of the spectrum. I'd like to see a representative democracy rather than a monopoly. That's all. So I've covered that, and I don't know where you want me to go from here. I really don't know what you want me to cover from here. Iran, Trump, uh, La Raza backing Jeb, which corporate, uh, who are the corporate winners from the uh, Iran sellout? Can do all of that stuff. Fascist judge jailing a clerk for refusing gay marriage license, not in China, but in the United States of America. So you want to hear about human rights in China? How about human rights in America? Why do Christians not have human rights? Why do Christians not have religious rights, religious freedom? I'll let you figure it out. Maybe you could put two and two together. WABC, Jim, go ahead. Make your point. What's on your mind? Okay, hi. That's me. I'm from London, England. I grew up there, and I went to school there. And that was very socially oriented uh, uh, schools and, and the government. And when I was uh, 11 years old, my headmaster asked every kid in the class, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to go into business. I want to buy merchandise uh, and import it and sell it. And he sent me home and saying, yeah, this is, uh, he, he referred to the whole world, this is stealing. This is not, uh, you're not productive. That's what they thought, you know. Incredible. And so he said, he said, you as a bourgeois middleman is a thief. That's what Obama believes. Do you, you, you agree with me that Obama is a classic martinet of, of your time, a, a small-minded bureaucrat who got way out, of, way out of luck here, way lucky, a small-minded bureaucrat who's suddenly running the country? Isn't that what Obama really is? That's right. That's right. He doesn't want people to be educated. He doesn't want people to be, uh, to be advanced, you know. And uh, my story, I, I went and I got my GED as they called it then, and I, instead of dropping out like all my friends did, and they went into the labor force, I didn't go into the labor force, I went into uh, science, and I, <laughs> somehow I ended up in America, and I became a crystal grower, I grow crystals in, for the high-tech industry. And amazing, it, amazing, and, and I assume you've done very well for yourself. Thank God, thank God, but uh, I, I was referred to in England as the Palestinian boy, because I came from British Mandate Palestine. <laughs> and they were referred to as Palestinians, not the Arabs. And uh, you know what the history there was. They, they came to govern that country, and they, they, they wanted it their way. They, they got picked up. So you're of Palestinian origins, and yet, you're, and yet you're, you've done very well as a capitalist, correct? Correct, correct. I am a Palestinian because the Jews were referred to as Palestinians, not the Arabs. 
The Arab. Oh, so you're okay. So you're a, you're a Jewish man from Palestine. Exactly. British 